Ah, bon. pressure system moving in. I always like to just come outside first thing in the morning. There's no other real commotion. You know, most human beings aren't out and about. Most of the nighttime animals are either in bed or on their way to bed. And most of the daytime animals either just getting out of bed or they're already out looking for that early worm, you know. But anyway, welcome to the vlog, the Untamed Ambition vlog. My name is Thomas Milsna and this is, I guess, my homestead. Just try to be more connected with your environment. Try to be more connected with your food. This is what I refer to as homestead habitat. And I'm just gonna kinda give you a brief tour. I'm actually on my way out to let the chickens out of the coop because this week I installed a new automatic chicken door, automatic coop door. And uh, it sucks, it is absolute garbage. So it's not functioning and I peeked out the window and I could see the coop by design I can see the coop door from the house. So we don't always have to go out and check on the chickens. And we do everything that we can to automate our system so that if time doesn't allow, it's one of those things that we can cut out and fill that time with other activities. But from the house, I can see that the coop door did not open this morning. So I'm out here to open it. but. I wanted to give you guys a quick tour, guys and gals, sorry, don't want to specify, but uh, yeah, you can see we live in the woods, the house is tucked up into the woods, protected from the north winds, the north and east winds, uh, which a lot of times those north and east winds, in our area anyway, those north and east winds bring the real nasty storms. Our prevailing winds are usually out of the west or southwest, some variation of that. So those are more common winds, and those blow up through the valley, so we get good airflow. But then when we get those wind changes, when those fronts meet, then we get those nasty storms a lot of times, and, and we're protected pretty well from that. You can see there's some super tall trees, some massive cottonwoods. They're absolutely gorgeous trees, messy trees. What gorgeous trees. Um, so if I still got you, you're probably looking at me wondering, who's this dude with the beard and a bathrobe on, right? Kind of looking like the modern day Moses. I mean, if Moses was gonna wear a baseball cap, I'd like to think he'd wear mine. But, besides the point, I just came outside quick, pop outside, every morning it's Sunday morning this is kind of my Sunday tour don't have anything else to worry about we're not in a hurry to get kids to school we're not in a hurry to get stuff done at work it's just one of those downtime days it's really the only day of the week that I really just kind of try to shut my brain off from everything that's going on I've got everything prepped for Monday already work-wise and then the kids are just kind of relax and there's no timelines that's what I'm trying to say we're not really on a, a rigid schedule today there's things that have to get done but we're not on a rigid schedule so what I want to start doing you know this vlog thing I've been trying to figure out how to make it fit into my life 
uh, just so I can share some of these things that I think are important, uh, both through what I'm doing uh, with my business, through habitat development and food security systems, uh, but also what I'm doing around here because it's all directly related to that because we are part of that habitat, right? We as human beings need to do everything we can to function as part of these natural systems that we are surrounded by instead of trying to battle them. That's where my passion lies. That's what I'm trying to achieve every day. And I just want to kind of show you the things that I'm doing on my small scale. I don't really like to even refer to this as a homestead because it's small scale. We don't produce everything that we need here yet. We're kind of slowly working up to it and slowly building that. But I'm very adamant about accomplishing that goal of self-sustainability without compromising or degrading the natural systems around me. And that includes all these systems that keep the wildlife safe, happy, and healthy. So we're kind of trying to slowly improve this environment. Um, there's a lot of timber stand improvement that needs to be done. And, uh, you know, it just has kind of been neglected for a long time. But we're slowly trying to improve that habitat while accommodating our family's needs. So we're adding a lot of mass bearing trees, you know, and, and overall abundance. If we improve the forest, then the wildlife that lives in the forest gets all the nutrition that they need within that forest. And the things that we're producing are gonna be attractive to them, but it's more of a supplemental treat or a snack for them. And then we get to enjoy seeing them when they're close and they're feeding on those things. But for the most part, they're not gonna rely on those things. That's where a lot of people end up having shrub damage or crop damage, right? It's because the ecosystems around them that actually truly balance things out, those are not healthy. So the animals in those systems have to come into the other systems that are essentially exploiting the other systems to find enough resources to survive throughout the year. So that's one of the things that I strive to work on. Penny, what are you doing? Hey, you're not supposed to be in here. Yeah, you know what? Out. Kids and dogs. Anyway, I need to let these chickens out. Show you what this thing does. Battery's good. Self-filling automatic feeder. Again, automated systems save us time. A ruster. I'm gonna be completely overhauling this. Completely overhauling this chicken system here in the near future. Uh, making it a multi-level composting system that's easier access now I have a tractor I need to improve that system so I can cycle through you can see compost there in a location that I'm hoping to make a little path to get in here with the tractor so I can move that without having to use a wheelbarrow I like using a wheelbarrow but this is all hilly it's all on the hillside our farms LLC name is hillside harvest Appropriately so, but I need to be able to get the compost from the chicken pen and the chicken coop to the garden, to fruit trees around the property, to the food plots, these areas that we're trying to push production on, not letting it operate, you know, 100% natural, we're trying to increase production. If it was at its natural state, 100%, 
then that wouldn't be an issue. But because these areas have been depleted, because they've been forced out of a natural state for so long, grasses, you know, a lawn that's been mowed repetitively, and even this opening back here, I, I believe this was all a horse pasture at one point in time, long ago. Um, and then when the horses left that system, then it, and, and probably while the horses are still in the system, honestly, um, it just has been overrun and overgrown with invasives. And obviously all the invasives moving in, invasives in the landscape, and so on. I mean, right here, you got Japanese barberry. You got honeysuckle galore in here which is starting to butt out. Let's see that. But there are some good st good things in here. There's a patch of elderberry up there. So we're getting some stuff coming back. But it doesn't happen on its own. I'm gonna end up being all full of burrs back here. But none of this stuff happens on its own. It doesn't improve without the help of animals, okay? These systems require animals. We are a part of that system. We are an animal. But we are more like the wolf in the prehistoric type systems, the top apex predator that moves the animals around the landscape appropriately whether they actually understand it or if it's just the mere fact that that's how nature works that's how it was intended animals move around landscapes and cycle nutrients herbivores are absolutely required in these ecosystems to cycle nutrients and keep certain plants from running rampant and promoting diversity and health of other plants through cycling of nutrients and transferring of seed and so on. So when you remove animals from a system and you introduce invasive exotics, then everything's overrun. I just had a forester out on the property on Monday. Um, we purchased the neighboring property just recently or last summer, uh, but I had a forester out, a state forester, to walk the property with him to get uh, an official state stewardship plan put together that way i can apply for government cost share and then they'll pay me so much per acre to cover some of my expenses removing these invasives which is a good idea i know there's a lot of people out there that don't like government programs and i get it i don't trust the government in general i don't think anyone in their right mind right now is trusting the government to make the best decisions but these programs have been in place for a long time there's a lot of really good people that work in these programs in these offices so I strongly encourage people to apply for those. And I can help you if you need help through that process, but apply for those so that you get some money as an incentive. They put a timeline on those projects. That's another reason a lot of people don't like those programs, but those timelines are good. Again, I can help you. That's what I do on a daily basis is help people improve these properties. But even a simple thing is helping you come up with a plan to bite off manageable chunks of these projects is a huge factor in your success. And that's what we'll do is we'll break the property down into management units and then approach them, approach the, the government program, the NRCS with the EQIP program, and then have them help work out that stewardship plan to their liking so you get some cost share and they'll pay you per acre again. But that's what we're doing around here. Okay, and we're doing it, we're not locked into like a CRP contract. We're not locked into an MFL contract. We can do whatever we want. One of the biggest downsides with MFL is you're not allowed to graze them. And understandably so, because again, most people don't understand moving animals through a landscape. They wanna, they wanna house them on a landscape. And that's the problem with the soils and such around a lot of the country and also just the general public's con uh, perception of 
animals and animal use. We need to start looking at animals as tools to move them across the land while producing food. That's what ranchers do, and they've done quite well with that. We need to let them continue to do their jobs and continue getting better at what they're doing. But we have to understand that predators move animals across landscapes. That's their job. We are the top of the food chain. We can't forget the fact that we are at the top of the food chain, right? In certain situations, we are definitely not the apex predator, but given our technology and our knowledge and what we can do and what we can accomplish, we are at the top of the food chain. We need to start acting like that and making decisions because everything that we do from the chemicals that we introduce in the landscape to the animals that we introduce and allow in the landscape to how we build our houses and what we do with our waste, all of these things dictate our future survival as a species. Now, we can fight it, but we got this far based on these natural principles, based on evolution, and I think that we owe Mother Nature a debt of gratitude for the fact that she honed us into being intelligent human beings to actually produce the things that we do. But we shouldn't take advantage of that and destroy those things from which we came from, okay? That's Homestead Habitat. Sorry, I'm getting a little preachy there. It's just the fresh air. It, uh, it's so good. It feels so good. Sunday morning, birds are chirping. It's a little bit cold. My fingers are getting cold. Um, again, because I'm out here in my pajamas. But I just wanted to bring that to you. So I'm just going to roll some B-roll of some of the things that went on this week. Uh, some, of the, some of the projects that we're working on right now. You can see the food plot behind me. If you follow me on uh, Instagram, it's about the only place I really post, and then whatever that shit trickles over into Facebook, I guess they're the same thing these days. But I post a lot of stuff on here because I try to stop out here daily. I'm just kind of monitoring things. I've got some test plot situations going on. Um, so I'm always testing stuff, trying to improve those blends. And right now we're working through these soil-saving blends with animal integration. And I, my animal integration right now is deer. There's a lot of deer poop. They're out here. They break down the nutrients, cycle through deer poop. And I also had a bare spot on the, in the soil here along this edge. So I threw some junky, uh, like, grass hay that's, like, literally 40 years old from the barn at the farm. I spread it out on that to help protect the soil a little bit better. And... Uh, start improving this. I ran chickens across that food plot last summer in a chicken tractor and trying to reignite the soil life. It's been pretty stagnant, a lot of invasives trying to pop up, all these little things you see popping up underneath the tree here, all invasive shrubs trying to grow. See that? But I'm trying to slowly peel back and heal this land, and then I'm going to let it fill back in with the native seed bank as much as possible. I'm going to add some things to, to improve structure and cover in areas where I want it to protect our house, to feed our family, to create cover so we can sneak back in. You can see this blind behind me. It's an earth blind. I refer to it as the observatory. I like to slip in there at the end of the day when I'm done with work, especially if I have a long day in the office and I hate office work. Not so much the office work, but just being stuck in the office. I like to slip in there and watch the deer and, and other wildlife around here. And There's been a lot lately because this food plot is a very valuable limited resource right now. But things are going to start greening up here real fast. But this is project number one up here. I need to peel back this edge because and this is one of the things I was talking to the forester about and he this is the second time I've walked to property with him and he uh, I, I just kind of I just kind of like to see what these guys say if they are pumping you full of opinions or if you know they follow consistency and this gentleman is very good at what he does but what he mentioned was the need 
to regenerate these poplar stands. Um, well, I kind of actually, I guess I kind of actually <laughs> mentioned the need to or the desire to because we are losing our poplar and aspen species because they're not really a, a preferred or desired timber species and also just overall lack of forest management. But they regenerate quickly, so they provide a lot of good, valuable wildlife cover. But they also provide a lot of beneficial bird food and cover as a tree. Um, they're a keystone species. Cottonwoods are in the same family. And they have a ton of caterpillars on them in the summertime. But I don't want to go into too much detail because I really like to ramble on this stuff. I've got so much to say. But anyways, I need to regenerate these aspen stands and they're over maturing and de deteriorating so i need to make sure we're getting that um, taken care of but before i can regenerate that aspen stand i need to get rid of these invasives so i need to get that cost share stuff yada 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 and yes you can see i mean there's not a lot going on in there once these things leaf out then you won't be able to see through here at all and i think that's a problem is a lot of people are surrounded by stuff like this and they don't spend a ton of time outdoors this time of year and then things start to green up and then they kind of don't notice it and there's a lot of invasives underneath here growing but for the most part when you see stuff like this where there's really nothing growing on the ground other than a few clumps of grass and mostly moss that tells you that there's not a lot of sunlight hitting the ground plain and simple there's just not a lot of life you're you're missing that whole base layer in that ecosystem the shrub layer has overwhelmed it and choked it out because it's invasive and nothing feeds on it, it doesn't it's not kept in check in that system and spreads like crazy Ben come on come on so that's a project but overall working on just clean up this food plot I down some trees over here um, for this winter periodically I was dropping trees trees that I was planning on bringing down I wasn't dropping them specifically to feed deer well I guess in a roundabout way I was because I'm trying to remove them to get more sunlight to the ground in some areas or replace them with more productive mass producing trees because of the proximity to our house and these edge habitat areas is these edges in general are the most productive parts of the forest ecosystem. There's the most sunlight there, you get the most diversity there, so really want to prioritize those edges. So I got to get that cleaned up, regenerate that aspen stand, improve this food plot, improve these edges, get those trees out of there, get that cut up for firewood. We got bees coming, we got pigs coming. I don't know if I'm going to bring sheep up here this year or not. I'm kind of trying to figure out the logistics on moving cattle more frequently across smaller properties to use them for land management. Um, very, very effective on bigger properties, but there's always associated costs with moving animals, uh, both in the stress and the health of the animal, potentially, if done incorrectly, but also just the time and money involved with transportation, especially when gas prices are as high as they are. But that's it. That's the Sunday tour. Um, I'm sure there's plenty of other stuff that I forgot to talk about, but it doesn't really matter. We'll circle back on it the next go around. I just uh, gotta get inside and get some pancakes, get some relaxation time. Let's see stairs. I had to redo the stairs on that. That's a whole nother topic, another story, another day. But uh, long story short, I had an idea. And it didn't work out as I had planned. So, making modifications moving forward. But one last thing. You know, it's from the outside looking in, this type of lifestyle, this homesteading, pseudo homestead wannabe homesteader doesn't matter it doesn't matter right uh, I don't really think of myself or even ever really refer to myself as a homesteader by any means 
I'm just trying to create a productive, sustainable system around me. And I'm also trying to live my life and raise my kids in an environment similar to how I was raised, um, but at a different pace. I grew up on a very busy farm, still a very busy farm. I'm just trying to show my kids and also live my life full of experiences, real, true, connecting experiences through nature, through family, through community, stuff like that. Real experiences, not through a screen, right? Not these virtual experiences. Those are great to give you good ideas, good information, and persuade you to make decisions towards the real experiences. Just remember that. Don't ever be persuaded through a fake experience to do more fake experiences. Plain and simple. That's a wrap. Thanks for watching. Yummy. Good work, Mom. Thank you.